So uh, I think we're all interested in hearing what these three expert voices have to say on Ontario as a global point of entry. Uh, would you like to go first, Peter? You seem to be most anxious. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, good afternoon. Um, it, um, it, it, it's it's a, a macro sort of view. I mean, what are why people come here? And, um, and, I, and there's, to me, there's no wonder why people come here. I'm um, born and raised here and lived here for most of my life. And it's, um, it's, um, it's humbling every day, almost every day. I mean, people who have come here, who uh, especially startups and especially young uh, entrepreneurs, and, um, and they leave everything they know and everyone they know, and they come here because they see something. And I know that they don't come here just for the weather, um, especially in February and March. But they come here because they see they see opportunity here, and they see the ability to um, to uh, fulfill their dreams. Um, like it's it's an amazing Ontario's an amazing province. The GTA is an amazing area that's that's been through explosive growth in the last 20 years. I I bring friends who moved away from here 20 years ago to Vancouver or wherever. And, um, and they look around and they don't even recognize the place. And it's not a cliche. They really don't recognize where we grew up together or downtown. I mean, if I take them downtown, they just, they can't, they can't imagine. So, um, so it's, it's remarkable how much it's grown. There's probably a quarter million people come to Canada, immigrate to Canada a year. And about, I think about half of those people end up somewhere in Ontario. Um, and it's usually south of, let's say, Barry. So it's the growth of the Latin community, especially, has been absolutely unbelievable. Um, from you know maybe ten or fifteen years ago, um, I could take you places in Toronto where you won't even feel like you're in, like you're in Toronto. Um, and one thing I, I notice and admire about the Latin community is that if you're Latin, you're Latin. Um, it doesn't matter what country you're from, unless it's during World Cup. But other than that, um, you know, if you're Nicaraguan, Honduran, Mexican, Brazilian, you're Latin. And, and I think that's very unique. And I see in the business world here that companies are, and people that are coming are more than willing to help each other and work together. So I think it makes for a very interesting 10,000 foot view. I, I was going to inject the Waterloo end of the, the GTA story. So for those of you who are new to this area, Waterloo is about an hour from Toronto. And it, an hour if you're not commuting during rush hour. Um, otherwise, it's about two hours. Um, but it's not geographically that much different in distance to San Francisco and San Jose, if you're familiar with California. And um, like you talked about in Toronto, Waterloo, which is a small community of about a half a million people, um, has a very similar thriving ecosystem to what comes or what you find here in Toronto. And Communitech is a piece of that. So if you come to uh, Waterloo as an entrepreneur or you come as a, an employee looking to find an opportunity um, in KW, there's a huge innovation ecosystem supported by the universities, by a huge number of startups and growing and mature organizations. And, and that thriving ecosystem of innovation really spans that corridor between Toronto and Waterloo. It's a pretty exciting place to be. We also spend time um, as an organization and as a community thinking about how do we bring organizations here. So Communitech has welcomed just in the last couple of weeks um, visitors from places as remote as China and New Zealand and people from closer places as well. Um, and we also think about how we get our companies to go and connect what they're doing to other global ecosystems. And so we have a program, multiple programs actually, that take our organizations into countries all over the world, including in Latin America. And I guess it's my turn. I uh, happen to be on the receiving end of what uh, Peter describes as this magnetic Ontario that uh, everybody wants to come to and views uh, as uh, more than just the weather. Um, uh, I represent two bodies here, effectively. Uh, National Angel Capital Organization, which is the voice of angels across uh, uh, the country. And uh, NACO is responsible for designating entities which are intake points for people applying for uh, permanent resident status under the startup visa program. Um, so we have been active in trying to 
all of those uh, ports of entry, if you will, over the last uh, number of years, the program starting in April of 2013, and now uh, becoming more formalized as we're moving forward. Now, I also uh, am a, a member and the president of the Golden Triangle Angel Network, which is one of those designated entities through which people come and look for uh, certificates which will allow them to get into a stream to get permanent residence status within six months. So I'm on the receiving end of the many, many people who want to come here. We get telephone calls, emails, applications from around the globe for people who see Ontario and perhaps the GTA uh, Waterloo Corridor is a very desirable place to be. So uh, we're fortunate that we see so much interest here. Uh, I must make one overriding comment though from an angel investment standpoint. Angel investors are what I'll call uh, high-touch individuals who are interested in having direct interaction with companies and with entrepreneurs and as such uh, when we receive applications from people from remote areas, it becomes somewhat difficult to necessarily uh, deal with their application unless we can see them, if, unless we can actually get to know them, because there is a requirement that angels will invest $75,000 in startup ventures that come as part of the startup visa program. So if I had any advice to give to anyone, uh, however, it may be possible for you to get direct contact with angel investors and designated uh, entities. Uh, try as hard as you can to do that because it will give you a much uh, better chance of being successful under the SUV program. Thank you for that. Uh, I think there is likely high interest among many here today in the startup visa program and bringing Latin American companies to Canada. Uh, if I understand correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, there are the three types of startup visa, uh, angel investment, VC investment, and the non-investment uh, accelerator stream. What are your thoughts on those three options, and also the relative lack of success and uptake in the visa, far, far lower than intended by the government, and perhaps uh, what, are, what changes can we expect to see um, that we're being told to expect changes soon in the visa. What are your thoughts on that going forward? I can talk a little bit to the changes that are coming on Monday, and uh, by no means do I know what the specifics are, uh, but what I can say is that what's coming on Monday is intended to help bring highly skilled and experienced candidates to companies that are already based here. So we're trying to encourage the flow of, um, of talent into Canada to help support our ecosystem here. Uh, we know that our companies need highly skilled people in many different areas, and that those skilled people are located all over the globe. And so our governments are trying to help encourage people to come here. We also know that organizations that have chosen Canada as their home, so they've come here from somewhere else, are in the same circumstance. And so this new visa that's coming out next week is intended to help support that. Rob, maybe you can comment a little bit on the other side. Well, yeah, the focus, as Heather says, is shifting a little bit because we do need talented people to embed in existing companies. Uh, the startup visa program as originally uh, uh, laid out and as moved forward by angel groups is to bring entrepreneurs here who will start companies, but not start ordinary businesses, not start corner stores and sandwich shops, but rather start um, uh, knowledge-based industries which will be employers of tens, uh, hundreds, thousands of people, and businesses which will be scalable on a, on a global scale. So uh, that is still the objective from the angel standpoint. So despite what Heather says about the refinement of the program, uh, our focus will still be to bring wonderful brains and, and innovative people to Canada and to Ontario to uh, create brand new businesses which will grow to be large players. Uh, like uh, we heard about uh, uh, Blackberry today, I think. You know, it, it may not be what it used to be, but it's one of those things that became a global player, and we'd like to have more of those businesses in Ontario. 
never been so. I, I, uh, immigration is a federal responsibility, and uh, so the province is. Uh, I mean, the province understands that there's there's uh, there, there are changes coming, and we're, we're anxious and looking forward to seeing changes coming from it. Um, and the opportunity to come here and and to uh, to sort of be involved in this they call the knowledge economy, as opposed to you know just a regular sort of business, and the, the ability to get a head start. Uh, by coming and doing that is uh, is absolutely vital to uh, to the economy. And uh, I mean, I guess a lot of it comes from students as well. Students come here from abroad, and then they they, they, they go to Waterloo and they find a job in Waterloo. And there has to be a mechanism for them to be able to continue living, working, and and, uh, and starting a life in Waterloo. I talked to so many people that came here originally for university or college, and then ended up staying. We see that too, and we encourage it actively. Yeah. So, what, Communitech spends quite a bit of our time actually reaching out to the universities and colleges in our area and in the geography within a couple hours drive around us, specifically to make sure that students who have a great idea who may have come here from somewhere else understand clearly what support there is available for them and what the opportunity is, and that we also encourage them to connect with our employers. So they stay at home. I guess the only ones that don't make it are grandparents. <laughs> and moms. And moms. <laughs> uh, just, just to reiterate the, the importance of, uh, from my perspective, angel investors having an opportunity to get to know uh, the companies and entrepreneurs that they want to invest in. Uh, foreign students who may be here working, or, or at least to, uh, as students learning in our Educational institutions such as the University of Waterloo or Wilfrid Laurier or the University of Guelph in our area, uh, those candidates really stand a better chance of being successful in an SUV program because our angel members have opportunities to meet these people face to face and over a period of time get to know their talents, get to know uh, the, the, the sort of uh, program that they're trying to develop in terms of new businesses. So I would just highly recommend that uh, uh, the students should be looking at the SUV program as a way to uh, perhaps become permanent residents if indeed they want to be. I was going to tie into that, Robin. An opportunity that Communitech offers to startups who are interested and ready to start to scale um, and are looking for an accelerator program to help them do that. Communitech offers a couple of different accelerators, and while we take most of our companies from within a two or three hour drive, we have welcomed companies from other parts of the world into some of our accelerators. And as part of those accelerators, we do connect those companies to investors like G10 and others. Um, and so if you're looking for those opportunities for face-to-face, -face, you're looking for an opportunity to accelerate the growth of your company, I would encourage you to look at programs like Communitech Rev and Fierce Founders as potential opportunities to do that. So it sounds like uh, recruiting students to become startup founders <coughs> is a major focus for all three of you. Is that a fair statement? It just makes a lot of sense, right? Absolutely. So, I know I have a loud voice, but it's not that loud. Um, for us, it's more than that. Um, so for, for Communitech, yes, students are a huge source of new ideas and innovation and the ambition to become a founder of a company. Um, what we've also seen is that uh, a number of the entrepreneurs in Waterloo are actually coming from you know, places like Blackberry or other growing companies or, or you know, successfully growing companies, um, and they've, they've got that ambition to start a company on their own. Well. So for, for Commuter Tech, it's not about one particular audience. We want entrepreneurs to come from a bunch of different places because it works best in our community if the ecosystem can learn from one another. And in, in places like yours, you, you can't, it's not a bubble, you can't, you can't be at an incubator or accelerator and lock yourself in an office and not talk to them. If you do that, you, really, you don't want people. You want people that are going to interact with each other and help each other and, and mentor each other. So they're not only getting mentored,
Well, certainly here at Latin Startups, we are pioneering a different model that, that is more about bringing already innovative companies from Latin America to scale from Toronto. What is your analysis of that uh, strategy, and how could we uh, have greater impact doing that in terms of bringing genuinely innovative, globally scalable companies to Ontario? <laughs> well, I think one, one of the most important things that we see, and, and Peter, you talked a little bit about this, one of the most important things that we see for successful companies that do start to scale is it's not just about the location that they're in, it's about what they access in that location. And so, you know, great innovation ecosystems and innovative companies um, pull together a network of supportive resources. So they tap into the universities, and we have a ton of incredible universities in the Toronto Water Group. They tap into large enterprises that can help them by being clients or help them by, um, in some cases, providing investment. And so Communitech works on that and builds those relationships as well. They tap into government support, which I know we're doing in, in places like this. But all of those different pieces um, make a company successful. You can't, like you said, you can't do it on your own. And, and one of the best benefits to being in this region, in Toronto, in Waterloo, in Ontario, is there is so much richness here. There are experienced companies, experienced candidates, smart young people, a supportive government, and you know, supportive large and other small companies. So, so tapping into that ecosystem and becoming a part of it, an active part of it, to me is one of the biggest ways you can succeed here. Well, I, I was just going to say that uh, and anything that you can do to facilitate uh, interaction between the groups that you work with and the groups that are represented here. Um, uh, we can't work in silos if we want to grow this uh, ecosystem, as it were. Um, so, so we need to bring each other together, whether it's us going to you or you coming to us, but we together need to know each other and what our strengths are and what we can do to facilitate mutual growth and global expansion. So I think uh, that's where I, 